Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about some surprises that I had when I moved to the Phoenix area coming up on three years ago now, which seems really crazy how time flies. But I thought I knew what I was getting into. For the most part, I had a pretty good idea. Sunsets, the heat, all that sort of thing. But all the other things that came with it came to a little bit of a surprise. So in this video, we're going to talk about the top surprises that I've had moving to the Phoenix area. Stay tuned. <coughs> Before we move into number one, make sure to subscribe to the channel. If you're not already a subscriber, leave a comment on this video if you have any questions so I know if I'm being helpful, if I'm answering the right questions that you have. Is there any other area you want me to cover, a specific neighborhood, maybe a top 10 list of some sort? I'll add it to the list to make sure that I add it to some future videos coming up on the channel. And also reach out to me, phone, text, email, if you have any questions, if you're looking at maybe an investment property or maybe you're moving from the Midwest, maybe the Northwest, maybe across town, hit me up and I'll, I would love to help. So number one, the heat and the cars. Since I've moved here, I've replaced my battery once and I've had some other errors come up on it. And, talking with people two to three years uh, replacing a battery. Um, if you get a really good one, you have warranties and that sort of thing, but it does have a lot more wear and tear on the car in general, specifically batteries and then tires. Just imagine the heat just, just constantly pounding on your car if it's sitting outside. So a couple of things you can do is park in the shade. If you're going to work, sometimes they have a covered parking option, or if you're at home, you have a garage, that sort of thing put it under the, away from the sun as much as you can even i found myself as i become more phoenician that if i'm going to a restaurant or something and it's super hot out i'm looking for a shaded parking lot or if i'm going to the lowe's home depot or you know, some type of store i'm trying to find a tree or something and it didn't take me long to start to figure that out but it does have a little bit more wear and tear on your car next up we have the cost of air conditioning and the summer months specifically when it's super super hot last year we broke all kinds of records i think it was 90 days over with a low of 90 degrees and just think of how much your air conditioning needs to run to keep you cool in your house so that's something you really want to try to keep that cost down a little bit because it can get out of hand so use the programmable thermostats reach out to your company that you're paying for to keep your house cool, there's a couple of them here, and you can put yourself on a budget plan where you pay the same amount every month, or it's a very typical, a lot of other, depends on where you live in other parts of the country, they always have these types of plans, but, and also three to seven, or there's certain time periods that are peak hours, just try to use less, less power, less cooling, if you can, during those time periods, and then it's gonna, going to keep that cost to a little bit more manageable level. There's also solar panels that people do, um, there's some pros and cons to that, but it's just something to be aware of that that is going to be considerably different cost than if you are coming from a different area. But if you're coming from a cold area, you, you kind of have the heat problem where you're, you're heating the house versus <laughs> trying to keep it cool. So pick your poison. I'd rather have the heat any day after spending so much time in the cold. But let's move on to number three next. <coughs> One of the first things I noticed when it first came down to visit was we would go to dinner and we would leave with sister's house that I was staying at and we'd go across town and it was open field and open field and open field and all of a sudden it's a little bit of a city in a neighborhood and then a little bit more open field and you have horses and you got a city and a new neighborhood and, a, and condos and then you got open field and horses. It's super spread out. And if you go up the 101 towards Scottsdale in between like Tempe and Scottsdale, off to the east it's all open and then you have a casino and off to the west it's open and then you have old town and you have scottsdale and there's just a lot of a lot of native american land as well and that's a lot of it or just sometimes it's just farmers that haven't sold their land and the, there's been so much growth that if they can't get a hold of the land they're just building on the other side of it so it's just something that i've gotten used to and it's become kind of normal but it's one of the first things i noticed and it was a little surprised but it's so spread out and if you go from one corner to the other corner of phoenix you could spend a whole weekend just trying to get it around <coughs> next up we have phoenix in general I was, as i was coming to town moving to town all i think is palm trees cactus or cacti plural of cactus something 
to be aware of. Just this is this is exactly what I was picturing. I was surprised by how much as you get into certain areas of the metro that's not necessarily the case it looks to me so i went to school on the border of north dakota and minnesota and it's very flat there and my brother-in-law and sister moved down from that area to phoenix area and if you get into the gilbert area it's kind of call it the arizona fargo because fargo north dakota it looks similar it's kind of flat but with cacti, cacti and palm trees. There's not a lot of palm trees over there, but then if you go over to the North Scottsdale area, starting to get into the mountains, that's just one specific spot in the Metro where it's very picturesque, very Phoenix resorty as I would probably picture in the postcards. And a lot of this, and just, you got even some flowers blooming sometimes when it's not as dry, but there's certain neighborhoods that look that make me feel like I'm right in the Midwest. The trees and the grass, and because it's not super common grass in general here, because you really have to try to water it constantly just to keep it alive. But that was really surprising to me is that the trees and some of the Midwest feel of some of the neighborhoods that I've ran into. <coughs> and then we have the huge tech industries creating so many jobs, specifically tech and banking. Lots and lots of employers here creating lots of jobs, Intel, there's Facebook, there's a lot of data centers. And there is a couple different surges of production companies that are coming from LA and building up. There's one, I can't remember off the top of my head where, where they're putting this. I think it's, um, I think it's in, I don't want to speak. I'll look it up and I'll put it on the bottom here, but there is huge production type of companies that want that they see the value of Arizona the talent that's here as well and the costs are way lower as I would imagine just for everything so they're building it here and it's also a short distance from LA so there's a lot of surge for that just the the movie industry in general and acting and production and then banking and tech so I don't really see it slowing down so it's a huge factor to consider when you're moving here. Lots of jobs, lots of opportunity. But it's a dry heat, they say. Yes, that's the common joke here, comparing this to humidity in other areas of the country. Think of New Orleans or Houston or some of these areas that are really, really humid, Florida. And when you compare the temperature of 100 or 110 to dry heat, are very little humidity to high humidity. It's not even a comparison. I, I laugh and we joke about it. It's, it's, it's true, uh, but I didn't know how much there was to that statement of, is it is it true or false? I mean, I thought maybe it was a bit embellished, but I can say I was in 115, or I live in the, the deep of the summer heat, 115 is not super uncommon. That's Fahrenheit. And with low humidity, it's not super, t you're not sweating through your clothes all the way like you would at 90 degrees with high humidity. So it's a huge, it's a thing. And it, the dry heat or the dry, um, the dry, the low humidity is what I'm trying to spit out is far better in my eyes, but that's based on my opinion. Maybe you want to disagree with that. I'm being curious if you would rather be in high humidity or low humidity. And then we have the extreme amount of wealth. There's money in all areas of the country. There was money back in the Midwest. There's money all over the states. But there's money here in Phoenix. But when you get to certain pockets, there is wealth. It's different between having enough to enjoy yourself and stupid wealth. And there's some areas in the metro that just have stupid wealth and there's unlimited amount of things to do in these areas specifically like golfing and restaurants just any re i just take this for granted now is i could be at a restaurant that's cool little spot gets some, has some great food maybe some great drinks a lot of fun people some good energy and there's just unlimited amount of those sort of places and there's uh, resorts you have all kinds of spas and you have just unlimited those are the industries that are appealing to abundant wealth and you have private airport at scottsdale jets coming in and out i was over there the other day and i was surprised that 
you think at private airport, maybe a couple of jets come in and out, but land, 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 take out. It was like a busy, like Phoenix Sky Harbor airport. It was constant airplanes coming in and out and they're all jets. Some are smaller ones, but just unlimited amount of wealth. And it's, for me, I'd rather be around more wealth and it kind of rubs off. You always say that you're the, you're the product of the top or the five people you hang around. So you hang around wealth and fun people and energetic people, and then pretty soon you're the same and you're, that's your circle. So within reason, I, of course, I always love to have the people around me that are supportive and loving and energetic and fun and all that sort of thing. So I'm getting a little off topic, but wealth, that's our next one here for the surprises. I was expecting some of that, but just not the amount of it. <coughs> then last up we have the friendliness and the welcoming of people. It just feels like the people that I meet are real and so they don't, they're not rude. I mean, East Coast has this stereotype of just in your face, kind of rude and cutting you off and because there's just no time. They're always rushing and hustling. And we're considered West Coast here, even though we're not really on the coast, but we're Western part of the States. Just a little bit more relaxed and, but there's also a lot more hustle. There's hustle here people making a lot of money, doing a lot of business ventures, that sort of thing that we covered the wealth already. Um, back to the wealth a little bit is it just multiple homes. A lot of times people just have second, third, fourth home here. So in the cars and all that stuff sort of thing. But everyone I've met, I mean, there are always exceptions. It's just been very, very nice, friendly, asking about me. Hey, how are you doing? Let's get together. I don't really feel a lot of the the fakey drama or all these other layers of things that you can sometimes run into with people in general. And that's just my experience. So I'm kind of curious if you would say the same if you're already here in town or those that you have haven't visited and you're thinking about moving here. What was your first take when you're out at the restaurants or if you're talking to people? For even to say there's a lot of vacationers here too. So they're in vacation mode and they're having fun and they're looking forward to this, but maybe for a while. So that maybe is some of it too when I'm out and about, but I think just in general, people are just really friendly. Then we have just the unlimited amount of things that you can do. I covered this on some of them already in various degrees, but unlimited restaurants, unlimited activities of hikes, unlimited golfing, unlimited resorts. Those are things that come to mind, just events in general. There's so many different events that come up that every single weekend I could find something to do. Um, and it, even in one specific area, probably within 10 miles or so of where I'm at right now. So unlimited amount of things. I, I knew there would be a lot to do here. Um, the weather's really nice. That's a huge part of it, but I was a little surprised on the amount of endless possibilities. <coughs> Those are my top surprises after moving here to the Phoenix area and being here for almost on three years now. Did I miss any? I'm sure I did. <laughs> There's, I'll probably be driving down the street tomorrow. And I'm like, oh, why didn't I talk about that? There'd be probably three or four or five other things that just come to mind. But just top of mind, those top nine that I mentioned, or I think it was nine, um, maybe even I'll come up with a bonus. We'll do another video part two if we need to. But what other questions do you have about the Phoenix metro area? Reach out to me, leave a comment on this video, like the video, subscribe to the channel reach out to me, text is a good option, or we could set up a Zoom call. Just to let me know, all the information is below the video, below the description of the video. Hit me up and I would love to help you with your journey on your next home.